Welcome back to LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. Today we're going to discuss the merits of DC pumps. They seem to be all the rage these days. Um, and part of that we're going to be installing a brand new Royal Exclusive RD3 230 watt 5500 gallon an hour variable speed pump on my tank as a return pump. Uh, so stay tuned. Hi Scott, how are you? I'm doing good, how are you doing Jim? Not too bad, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about DC variable speed pumps. Um, we have a project today. I've recently taken on a role with Royal Exclusive. Uh, they're the manufacturers of Bubble King and the infamous Red Dragon pumps. They're based in Germany and I'm handling some support for them in the United States. Woohoo! Yep, and with that comes some perks. Um, I've recently installed one of their brand new RD3 230 watt uh, 5,500 gallon an hour pumps on my closed loop in my tank and today we're going to install another one on my return pump or in place of my return pump. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. My return pump, unlike my closed loop, uh, was originally plumb based on a reflow hammerhead. Now we have here is three different pumps. This is a reflow hammerhead and this was my original return pump and the plumbing for this was substantially different on the input and output sides. Uh, my closed loop ran a reflow dark gold. Um, this is the dark gold here. Um, in retrospect, this hammerhead is rated at about 5,500 gallons an hour. This pump here is rated at about 4,200 gallons an hour. And this nifty um, Cinewave DC pump from Royal Exclusive, the RD3230, is rated at about 5,400 and change an hour, or I think 5,200 gallons an hour at a six foot head. It's a very powerful pump. Okay, so aside from strength or, or gallons per hour, what is different about this pump than these other two pumps? Well, these other two pumps, you plug them in and they produce whatever they produce and they consume whatever power they consume. Um, traditional DC pumps typically have a controller involved in Okay, so you mentioned the key word there. You said DC. So, can I assume that these two pumps are AC operated? That's correct. These pumps run on 110 volt. 110, and 110 volts. 110 okay. volts drives the actual motor. Okay. A DC pump takes that 110 volts and converts it to direct current voltage instead of our alternating current voltage. So it's a pump that runs off a battery or it's got some kind of a, 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 a converter that converts it from AC to no. DC? They have a power supply and a controller and this is the controller for the Red Dragon or the RD3 um, 230 watt pump and uh, the pump plugs into this controller, this plugs into the wall obviously and through the control interface or through a controller like an Apex um, you're able to control the flow and by adjusting the flow rate you adjust the amp draw, the current draw. So I may not need 5,500 gallons an hour. In fact, I know I don't need 5,500 gallons an hour and what this will allow me to do is bring the wattage and flow down and ultimately save power. Uh, the other advantage so, is... So, so, so I have to ask a question again. So is this the converter from AC to DC? Yeah, it acts as uh -huh. a power supply um, And then it's, it's controllable. Correct. I, there's a little plug port here um, with a cable that I have that will allow me to plug it into my Apex. Now, for this particular pump, I'm probably not going to control it through my Apex. There really isn't any value in having that kind of... Is it by itself controllable? I mean, it's a controller. It is a controller. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the Apex would be an alternative means of controlling it. That's correct. So okay, and this has the port or the connection on the backside to go into that. But that's correct. It doesn't necessarily need that. That's correct. For my okay. closed loop, um, one of these, it actually is controlled by my Apex. And during the day, I run a higher flow rate than I do at night. At night, I slow it down. It saves me power. You're, 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 you have one already installed? That's correct. We have oh. one already installed on the closed loop. This will be the second of the two for my uh -huh. return pump. Um, and as I said, at night, I slow the flow rate down. My closed loop, in this case, blows out under my rocks to keep detritus from settling in there. So I really don't need that kind of flow because most of my flow is generated from my power heads, from my Tunzies, um, as well as my return pump. So for the return pump, we'll use predominantly a constant velocity because if I slow the flow down on the return pump, my sump level will increase. Right. When that happens, 
it affects oh, my skin. Protein skimmers go cuckoo. And exactly. So I maintain a constant level in my sump, and and really there isn't much value in me having control over this. Now some people might want to slow the return pump down when they feed. In my case. I don't care. My fish, they get the feed before it goes over my overflow for the most part. And I have filter socks in there anyway, so it really doesn't matter to me. I don't need that kind of control of the return pump. For me, the big advantage is, and, and one of the keys with these DC pumps, number one... Um, less the, energy consumption? You know, less energy consumption, but moreover, they're dead silent. Uh -huh. um, at least these pumps in particular are. Um, the other advantage is, is heat transfer. A traditional AC-based pump the power comes in and that, that wattage is converted to heat or, or some level of heat. Because the controller, the heat for this pump is primarily um, maintained inside of this control interface here. There is absolutely no heat transfer within this pump. The other one that I have in the tank runs cold as ice. Now that's good and bad. In the summertime, my tank I allow to hit 82 degrees. I no longer need a chiller. Um, and, and I use fans to keep the temperature below 82 degrees. So when it hits 82, I have fans that come on uh, and they bring it down to 81 degrees and shut off. Uh, in the wintertime, these you know heat generating pumps here tend to help me keep my tank above 76 degrees. It might get a little too cold in the wintertime as opposed to too hot in the summertime. It's, it's entirely possible. I expect a pretty good drop in my summertime ambient temperatures. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that in the wintertime I may actually have to substitute in a dart for my clothes. Now fortunately with the way my plumbing is, um, I can swap out a pump literally in a matter of about two to three minutes. It's just a matter of closing two valves, disconnecting two unions, and pulling out a pump and putting in the other one, closing the unions and opening two valves, plug it in, you're done. Um, what's going to make this a little bit more interesting, and I touched on it, is that my return pump was originally plumbed for a hammerhead, and with that, there was a two inch output and a two inch input. Um, the darts, I have a two inch input, but a one and a half inch output, and that is how I have my RD3s plumbed, is two inch input, one and a half inch output. And so we're going to have to change, I'm going to have to remove all of my existing return plumbing up to my two inch line that goes back to the tank and modify all that so that I can connect my manifold to the one and a half inch plumbing and also a loop that I have go underground to the garage and back that goes to my chiller that I don't use. Um, we'll oh, touch on I that. see. So it's not just a regular switch out. It's a, a modification to make the switch out. That's correct. But the beauty of it all is, is normally I maintain a couple spare pumps. I have one spare pump for my return pump. I have another spare pump for my closed loop. And with this new plumbing, I'll be able to maintain one spare pump that'll be able to be swapped in in a moment's notice for either the return or the closed loop. So with this pump, the way it's set up, it's modeled basically identically to the way my dart is. And same way with my other RD3 230 in there, the output and input are basically all in the same um, same line. So that I could swap in a dart for an RD3 or swap in an RD3 for a dart. Um, and so what we'll have is one spare pump instead of a hammerhead goal and a dart goal for my spares. So with that said, we're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. We're gonna start hacking into the plumbing. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hawk and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. 
There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. All right, so welcome back. Uh, this is the pump setup. This is my existing RD3 230 watt pump. It's running my closed loop, it runs through my UV. Um, the controller here, and I don't need the full power of this pump. I've actually got it running at 114 watts, which works out to um, roughly about 2,400 gallons an hour. And then at night it slows down, um, draws about 60 watts, uh, which is right around 1,000 gallons an hour. Um, we're going to be replacing the super dark gold here and as I said before I happen to have this one plumbed differently than the existing dark. I replaced a reflow hammerhead which we talked about briefly in there with the super dark because it was more efficient and I actually had it gated down because I didn't need the flow. I determined my flow based on the level inside the tank um, and I have a set level and in the case of the hammerhead I was gating it down quite a bit. With the RD3 I'll simply be able to push a button and reduce the flow by reducing the power consumption. Oh, uh, it's a lot more convenient. It's certainly more convenient and it should save a little bit on power but I'll be honest. These and gating down pumps doesn't slow down the pump, it just creates a little more work for the pump because yeah. you're restricting its outlet. You are technically but with the reflows they're very very efficient and when you gate a reflow pump down it actually reduces their power consumption. I don't quite know why or understand why but that's a rule of thumb with a reflow. And as I said, they're very, very efficient. And what's going to be interesting is to see how much power I use with the new pump versus the old pump. Now, I've gone ahead and plugged in a kilowatt, and this tells me what my current power draw is. And I'm pulling 186 watts with this reflow super dark gold. And what will be interesting is, and, and you can see on the controller here, but it reports what the wattage is. And I've already verified that it pretty much is dead spot accurate um, between what the display reads here and what um, a kilowatt reports. So with that said, I know right now my Super Dart is running at 186 watts or drawing 186 watts. Uh, when we get the new pump in and adjust the flow so that the level in my display is comparable to where it is now, it'll be interesting to see if there's any watt um, consumption drop. Now, if it was a Milwaukee or another type of pump, I would expect a substantial drop. But as I said, reflows are fairly efficient. The downside is is noise and heat transfer. Um, if you feel this pump here, which you can't, but you can imagine if I hold it for a minute, my hand is literally starting to burn. And some of that heat from the motor transfers through the volume and into the water. There's heat transfer there, which helps keep my tank temperatures warmer in the winter and hotter in the summer. Um, that's great in the winter, not necessarily great in the summer. Comparatively, this pump here is literally cold to the touch. There is no heat transfer there. In fact, any heat um, is relegated to the controller itself where the power supply is located. So I've gone ahead and I, I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to planning these kind of swaps. I've already assembled a lot of my plumbing. Um, as you can see, I've already got unions on here. Um, this is needed. Um, this will attach to the top of the pump here. Uh, and I'm going to have to rebuild a bunch of my plumbing. Um, this will connect exactly right to the existing inlet on my super dark there. Uh, what's going to happen though is because the way these pumps are set up are a little bit different, all this plumbing here is going to need to be pulled and cut out. Now this line here with the blue valve, I don't know if you can see it there, this blue valve here goes to my chiller in the garage and it runs out through the house and then it goes 18 inches underground and runs about 50 feet to the garage and then back underground here. I'm going to leave that loop intact because it does provide a little bit of geothermal cooling. Ooh, um, geothermal. 
On the flip side, my garage gets awfully warm and that heat in the garage probably has a little heat transfer into the chiller tank itself and while the chiller doesn't run, there's probably some ambient, ambient heat transfer into that chiller so at some point in the future I may actually cut the lines going into the chiller and um, put a little tea in there so that the line basically stays underground. Um, project for another day. But needless to say, so in order to do the swap, I'm going to remove both of these pumps here. I have them set up so they can be removed relatively quickly. I'm going to shut the drain valves going into the tank so that I can maintain all the water up in the display and drain the water level in my refugium and my sump a little bit. Uh, that will ensure that less water comes out of these pumps when I close the valves. Um, very little less actually, but it will keep things a little bit cleaner nonetheless. So, With that said, next step is to start shutting things down. Um, first item of business will be to close this pump off and disconnect it. So Pull the plugs. Pull the plug, yes. Yeah, so we're going to pull the closed loop, which I just did. I'm going to close the inlet valve on it. I'm going to close the outlet valve on it. And since I'm going to pull out the UV to gain space, I'm going to shut a couple of valves where it close the lines for my closed loop. That'll keep water out of the uh, UV. Got that done. Next step is to get the closed loop pump out of there. We're going to have a little bit of a mess down here. Uh, shut the valves on the return pump. Shut the valves on my manifold. We are ready. Um, tank is shut down. Valves are all closed. First item of business is to get the closed loop pump and the UV out of the way. And then uh, so why are we taking the, the RV pump out? RD3. RD3. Uh, we're taking that out so I have space to work. Uh -huh. I've so got working plumbing room. in there. Yeah, okay. exactly. And plus, this stuff's been set up for several years and I want to clean the mat and stuff like that. So, okay. first thing first, let's get this puppy out of here. You know, I've made this all um, modular so I can easily take things out and in. In this case, there's this little bucket thing here. Get some water out of this thing. Get this out of my way. Drain this puppy. UV is disconnected. Go get this thing out of the way. Next is to disconnect our Return pump. And you can see just how quickly I can remove these pumps in case of emergency. I mean, it literally takes minutes to pull a pump and swap it. Now, you get a better idea of what's going to transpire here. I've got to cut this line here. I'm going to have to make a new line that goes to my chiller loop. Uh, so we have a little bit of work and then I'm going to need to glue a bunch of fittings. So the first item of business is going to be to it's going to be to uh, disconnect my manifold line here. Shut the valve to the chiller. Open this union up. Sawzall. 